which is chapter three. Where are my slides? Uh, chapter three is you know falling objects and projectile motion. Okay, uh, so what are falling objects? What do they experience? Uh, what is a projectile motion? How's a falling object's motion is different from the motion that we saw so far? Okay. Um, what are the similarities? And so on and so forth. So, um, so you know, uh, here are objectives. Explore um, how objects uh, experience gravitational acceleration. Okay. And then we'll try to see examples of free fall and projectile motion. Okay, uh, we're not going to do a lot of calculation about projectile motion. It's uh, not we're not going to do it. Uh, but like we'll see it like from from a free fall part, uh, perspective, what the projectile motion mean. Okay. Um, then of course the motion of a projectile um, object is parabola or the path. Okay. Um, then, then acceleration due to gravity. Um, so any object, like for instance, you take two balls and then you drop them, uh, and then you will notice that like both of them may may hit the ground at the same rate, right? You know, ball. I mean, like, you take two rocks, two two rocks. Like one is one kilogram, the other one is two kilograms, and then you drop them at from the same height, and then you will see both of them like accelerating at the same rate, right? So. And then you take another another kind of heavy, heavier object, of course, you know, uh, and then you drop them, and then at the same time, like you will still notice that like those objects are also falling at the same rate. Then you you you, you may notice that like huh, pretty much like any metallic or rock object that you are dropping from from your height, they are they are all hitting the ground at the same rate. Then then probably like at the back of your mind, you may think like. Or probably all those objects are moving at the same rate or their their motion is changing at the same rate okay um, so who's influencing this motion who is dictating this motion it's the earth it's the earth's gravitational pull is dictating the object's motion once it left your hand okay so when you drop it it leaves your hand and then it experiences the whole gravitational pull. There is there is nothing else that controls the motion. It's it's all about gravitational pull. Okay, I mean at least for the heavier objects. Uh, and then we're coming back to our point. But the thing is, if you hold a rock and let's say a pepper, um, you know, and then you drop both of them. And then you'll notice that the rock hits the ground first. The paper, you will notice that like the paper, especially on its flat side, you'll see it like swaying side to side, right? Side to side. Like, you know, it's just, um, you have a rock and, and then the paper like this on its flat flat side okay so when you both drop those ones you will see that like the rock is going to hit the ground first the paper will you know will move to this side will move to that side it slows down you know just moves like side to side and then you know why why is that happening is it is it because the earth is not pulling the the paper as strong as the the rock, right? Hmm. So maybe like you know those things may be explained well. Um, the the only reason that like probably if you wrinkle that paper, the paper I was trying to mention, if you know you know if you fold it and then like you know it's just you change it to a small small ball. And then you drop the rock and that same paper. For sure, this time, probably the paper and the rock will hit the ground at the same time. 
you know, it, it, the paper was originally flat. The, you know, in the previous one, when I was trying to explain it, like the paper was flat on its flat flat side, like that, right? And you drop it; it moves sway to side and then slows down. Whereas the rock it just goes straight. But now this time, what you will do is like wrinkle, wrinkle the paper, like this. You wrinkle, and then you have the rock. You drop both of them probably at the same time. They will they will hit the ground. I mean, you haven't changed the the, the paper. The, that same paper. The only difference is it was flat, and then this time it's wrinkled. When it's wrinkled, like <laughs> it hit the ground pretty much as at the same rate as the rock. You know why the mass hasn't changed from here to this it's the same paper the only thing is one is wrinkled the main reason is because this guy when it's on its flat side you know the air resists the flow i mean it's falling there is air resistance there is air resistance the air is supporting it it's like the wings of an aeroplane are supported by 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 air like the air is supporting the the falling activity of the the, the paper for that reason it's not really falling as the way you see it here so that means it's a drag force provided by by the air the air is resisting it so what happened is like if you conduct the experiment in vacuum in vacuum that means in the absence of air where there is nothing you see here in this diagram you have a leaf or a paper and then probably this is a steel ball they both drop at the same rate they hit they hit the floor at the same rate so that means every object on the surface of the earth right, experiences pretty much the same amount of gravitational acceleration and that gravitational acceleration is equal to this much 9.8 meters per second square or 32 feet per second square in US customary units and it's always directed downward always because the center of the earth is towards towards the center of the earth and the earth pulls every object towards its center okay so now there is a lab, somebody conducted some kind of experiment. Uh, I'm going just to go through this like pretty fast. And then what happened is like they were measuring the time when an object is falling. And at the same time, they were recording how much distance it was traveling. Okay. And then by using the distance between the two and dividing it by the time, how, how long it took, right? Okay. The change in distance divided by the changing time then you know that's how this 24 was calculated then you can find the velocity okay and then there you have the velocity and the average time between them and then if you do some kind of like you know you did you did a lab experiment yesterday the first one like you know you plot the time on the x-axis and the speed or the velocity on the y-axis and then you try to find the slope of that graph right so if you do the same thing here you will notice that like the unit of the slope of this graph is going to be what right now this is done in centimeter per it will be centimeter per second because it's it's y-axis is centimeter per second per second so then eventually this unit is going to be centimeter per second squared. Right? You guys, if you, if you, if you see it like this centimeter per second squared is the unit of acceleration. So 
in this experiment that you can see that like they find the slope and the slope turned out to be this much we already mentioned it like in the theoretical part in the previous slide that there's this gravitational acceleration or any falling object due to gravitational acceleration experiences an acceleration equivalent to 9.8 meters per second squared. This value slightly changes. This value slightly changes. Changes like you don't experience the same gravity when if you are on in New York, like in, in Manhattan. Okay. You're not going to experience the same compared to if you are at the top of the Himalaya. Okay. If this is Mount Everest. This is approximately 9.8 because at sea level. Right? Manhattan is an island. It's a flat island. Pretty much where ocean level. Whereas here at the top of the Himalaya, it's just like way above from, the, from sea level. Gravity is going to be slightly different, slightly lower than 9.8. Okay. Why? If you go to further away from the Earth, of course, gravity decreases because the influence of the earth starts to decrease we're going to come to this in a little detail like later when we talk about like newton's gravitational law okay but for now just simply consider that like in all our calculations we are not much concerned about like the slight change in gravity on on the surface of the earth we approximate the as this gravity is as 9.8 meter per second square. Even for calculation's sake, even when we do calculations, for simplicity, we are going to even assume gravity is 10. It's, it's easier to remember 10 meters per second squared than 9.8. Okay. If I tell you gravitational acceleration is approximately 10 meters per second square, probably you might not forget it for the rest of your life but if it's like 9.8 then uh, i don't know that professor mentioned something like nine something you know it's like consider it like when you buy something like nine dollars 99 cents like the right price is nine nine dollars and 99 cents it's not ten dollars but 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 we consider it like how much did you buy this ten dollars we don't say it like nine nine point nine nine dollars no so it's easier to remember if you, if we, if we, if we assume like g is 10 meters per second square. The real value is, of course, it's uh, 9.8. Okay. Um, so uh, there is there is a historical background. Um, you know how how this uh, g 9.8 and things like that. You know. Um, so Aristotle he used to be a, a philosopher, right? A Greek philosopher. Uh, during his time, the thought was like heavier objects fall more rapidly. So this the same thing probably, you know, before you took your physics course, you may assume the same thing. You drop a paper, you drop a rock, and then the paper moves slower than, than the rock. Then from there, you may feel like, oh, because the rock is heavier. Okay. So, oh, that was like considered as Aristotle, Aristotle's idea kind of thing. Why? He never did any experiment to verify that. He just looked at it, like us, you know, when, when our, our, our misconception was um, from, from not conducting any kind of experiment, right? So you drop a paper, you drop a rock, and the rock hits the ground first. That's it. Okay. But then later, Galileo came into the picture and then he started to conduct experiments and then he said like what if i do that same experiment rock and leaf drop them from a certain height in the absence of air if there is no air then well, 
both the rock and leaf hit the ground at the same at the same at the same time and then he also uh, came up with the idea of like calculating distance for falling objects using this formula does this does this does this does this formula look familiar to you yes we saw a formula something similar to this in in kinematics it's like this initial times t and then half a t squared huh they're pretty similar the only difference is galileo's equation didn't have this yes what if you drop a ball if you drop a ball the initial velocity is zero or a rock if this is zero, then this whole term will disappear. You see, pretty much we are using like the same equation that was derived in 16 sum, right? Okay. So um, that's, 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 that's the theoretical background just, just I wanted to give you. Okay. Um, so in general, if you drop a ball from a certain height, you know, if you try to track it um what you will notice is something here like for instance we already said like gravity you can assume it's um 10 meters per second square so what will happen is like if you drop the ball we already know the formula saying that v final is equal to v initial plus acceleration times t yes Gravitational acceleration, gravitational motion or free fall. Free fall means an object dropped, an object thrown in the upward direction, an object thrown in the downward direction. All of them are free fall motions. When they lift your hand, you have no any control of that motion. It's dictated by gravity and its acceleration is constant and it's the same as 9.8 or 10 meters per second square. So, we already saw a gravitational uh, gravitational motion. I mean, a uniform acceleration motion. This thing moved, which is V initial plus acceleration times T. If you drop an object from a certain height, from a cliff or from the top of a building, what happens? Drop means you're not giving it any kind of initial velocity. You just let it go means its initial velocity is zero if it if the initial velocity is zero then the final velocity of the object is going to be acceleration times t this guy will be zero keep in mind this is for an object dropped or released if the statement says dropped or released that's that's what it means okay then if you see that then your v final is going to be equal to acceleration is 10 times t for something that's dropped. So that means if you drop an object, after one second, its velocity is going to be 10 times 1. After two seconds, its velocity will be to 10 times 2, 10 times 3, 10 times 4 and so on and so forth. That means it's going to be 10, 20, 30, 40. See how fast that object is moving? 50, 60, and so on and so forth. Okay. So that's what a uniformly accelerated motion looks like, you know. Um, but how about the distance? Whereas the distance is going to follow this formula. Keep in mind, this g doesn't mean anything. This means the 10, the gravity, gravitational acceleration. Okay. That's the same formula, the only difference. We put g here because it's, it's a free fall motion. On the other hand, the distance varies a little slightly different. It follows a zero at when time is zero, when you drop it. After one second, it's five. After two seconds, 20. After three seconds, I'm going for, for comparison, I'll, I'll put the velocity here. 
for a dropped object, right? We already said it. Like when it's zero, it's zero. When it's one, ten. When it's two, twenty. When it's three, thirty. When it's four, forty. Fifty. Sixty. You can see the difference here. The distance is varying with t squared, whereas the velocity is just varying with times t. You see, it starts slow, but it picks up. So, in general, like we'll come to that a little later. This one is a rapid, rapidly falling object. Like at some point, like the speed it moves in downward direction, it just becomes so tremendous. Look. 50 the difference is like 95 meters per second after 10 seconds an object starts to fall 95 meters in one second but after 10 seconds it's its velocity is 100 meters per second right because you know you can see the pattern 10 20 30 40 50 60 70 80 90 20 okay so in general, like, you know, um, when an object falls, the way it experiences, the motion it experiences, when you compare the velocity, the velocity changes like by 10 every, every second passes. Whereas the, whereas the distance it traveled is half times acceleration times t squared. There's a t squared and then that makes it like, uh, you know, uh, some kind of motion. Like, I mean, it's... Um, it's like, you know, if you try to graph it, for instance, the velocity is like this. It goes like, increases 10, 20, 30. It's like, you know, you're climbing a mountain. That's like this. If this is like, you know, if this is the time and if this is the velocity. But if you see the, how, how the distance varies, the distance starts with zero. It starts slow at the beginning. But after a few seconds, it starts like, to move very rapidly. You, that's why like we were trying to say a parabola motion. You know, something at the beginning, like the very introductory item that mentioned parabola. Right? That's why like we were saying a projectile motion is a parabolic motion somehow. Okay, so it follows like, this is an equation of like a quadratic equation, right? Because you have half times 80 squared. That's your distance. I don't know if you remember your, any of your, your algebra class. Okay. So this is like more of a parabola, where this is like just it follows acceleration times t. It's a linear equation. Okay. Um, this is just to give you like, you know, I, I don't usually like just to jump in and solve problems and run away. I uh, just wanted to give you like some some idea of like what is happening behind behind all those calculations um, sometimes the calculations are probably the you know the easiest parts like the, the, it, it, it is it is good like at the same time to try to solve um, things as well okay um, so after having said that like um, in your textbook I I want to solve two examples uh, then the examples are here. Uh, it's E1 and E2. Uh, so E1 states uh, it's chapter 3, E1 and E2. Okay. Then I'll try to solve those ones. Well, the, the recording of this class, it's it's being recorded on Blackboard. At the same time, I'm recording it and then most likely I will also post it on on YouTube. That's what we have been doing. Okay. Um, Marco, yes, the answer is yes. Uh, any any two points you pick any two points on 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 the graph. I know which graph you are referring to. Uh, the gravitational calculation. Um, the 
Yes, right. This is this is the graph that you are referring to. Um, yeah. You're welcome. So you pick any two points, then um, you will you will have the same. Okay. Uh, perfect. Um, any other question before I go ahead and then solve those two those two problems for you? So Jonathan, the the, the recordings are available. Um, like in Blackboard, within Blackboard, collaborate, and uh, they will they will also be posted on on YouTube. Okay, and then I will send the link soon as they are ready. Uh, <clears throat> All right, so. Examples. The first problem states the following. Um, for the exercises in this chapter, you the approximate value of G equals 10 meters per second square for the acceleration due to gravity. Um, so anything acceleration is 10 meter per second squared you're required to assume 10 meters per second squared it means forget the 9.8 okay acceleration is vector you know remember that uh, when we when we try when we try to solve problems we're going to see like uh, you know sometimes you may you may need to use negative 10 um, but we're let's start with the simple questions and uh, we'll talk about those ones later so the problem states e1 states so uh, you states like a steel ball is dropped from a diving platform with an initial velocity of zero uh, so it says literally dropped so the problem is like dropped okay so if the problem stays dropped then the first thing that you need to pay attention to is like it means its initial velocity is zero when you drop an object like then it means its initial velocity is zero you're just letting it go you're not throwing it okay so now the question is like you think the approximate value of g 10 meters per second squared what is the velocity of the ball 0 0.7 seconds after its release so um so those are your given parameters now your time is 0 0.7 seconds then now what are you required v final okay the final so this is a uniformly accelerated motion and an accelerated motion if there is an acceleration then there's a formula say the formula that i i gave you like to use so final velocity is equal to the initial velocity plus acceleration times t okay so you have v final you have the initial velocity which is zero because the ball is dropped plus your acceleration which is 10 multiplied by t which is 0 0.7 seconds okay so note that in 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 this particular problem what we're assuming is then 10 times 0 0.7 is going to be 7 and the psi unit of velocity is meter per second therefore your answer is seven meters per second. Okay. So keep in mind, in this particular problem, like there wasn't really much interest in like to use a negative value for acceleration or something like that. I haven't talked about this. Why? Because we are we're literally assuming like here our our just literal assumption is down positive okay. 
what we're assuming is like when when the ball is being dropped we're assuming that like that downward motion is positive it's a positive motion like huh that's how your textbook also dictates it like sometimes okay you have to express your assumption why because what if the ball was thrown in the upward direction what are you going to do are you going to use the same formula just simply lump everything together like as if uh, you know, acceleration is positive when it goes down and acceleration is negative when it goes up or well, as if like velocity is positive when it goes down and velocity is negative when it goes up or something like that or velocity is always positive now no matter what hmm. that makes it really a little more complicated but for now what we are trying to find is like just find the final velocity assuming that like that downward motion is positive because velocity is a scalar quantity acceleration is a scalar quantity and then if the object is moving in the upward direction and it may it may it may mean something different different from what different from the object falling okay so You know, you, you throw an object in the upward direction. And he's throwing an object in the downward direction. Let's assume this velocity is 10 meters per second. Same 10 meters per second. Do those two things mean the same thing? It's the same. It's like you're walking in this direction and then you are claiming that like, well, I'm moving in the west direction no two things are different like if I'm if, I, if I'm moving 10 meters per second in in the east it's not the same as if I'm moving 10 meters per second in the west if, if direction is significant and in velocity and acceleration direction is significant it's important all right uh, but for now just let's we're going to come to that like when we talk about when what if the object is being thrown what if the object is you know uh, dropped that kind of understanding um, so then for part b it says what is the velocity after 1.4 seconds so b is the same problem but now the time is 1.4 seconds. So the solution is the same. You'll still apply final velocity, assuming that down is positive, 80. Then your V final is going to be, the initial is zero again. Acceleration, again, it's going to be 10. The time is 1.4 seconds. Everything is in its side unit. So I'm not worried about the unit right now. So it's 40 meters per second. So that's, that's your answer. Okay. So E2 from that same set of problem. Still our assumption is like down is positive. The object is moving down and then an acceleration is Definitely, it's positive too. Okay. Now, E2. States. Through what distance does the ball fall in the first 0 0.7 seconds? So, E2, the same for the same given parameters. But the required is different now. Your required is now what is your distance while your time is 0 0.7 seconds okay that means like you are dropping the ball say from a certain height and you're dropping it drop means initial velocity as we said it's zero then it's falling after 0 0.7 seconds it traveled this distance then how much is that distance 
So there are equations for distance. Right? There is V initial times T plus half times acceleration T squared. Since the initial velocity is zero, then you have this whole term as zero. Okay, because this V is zero. Zero times T will be will be zero. So your, your better version of the equation will be D equals A T square. For a falling object, you can use this formula. It's pretty straightforward. If it if it says like an object dropped or released from a certain height, then that's it. Half acceleration ten times square zero point four. Uh, is it zero point four or seven? Zero point seven. Okay. So therefore your D is going to be, and you can do eliminations or you just simply plug, plug them in, in, in a calculator. Okay, it's so pretty much the same thing. So you will have five times 0 0.7 squared is 0 0.49. Then you simplify your D. Okay, so, uh, how much would this be? 5 times 9 is 45. Okay. So, this much meter. Okay. That's how you approach it. That's how, that's how you will you'll be able to calculate. Okay. The initial velocity is zero. The initial velocity is zero. So zero times any number is zero uh, because uh, because according to our given parameter, it says for the same problem as above. Um, so here, your initial velocity is zero. Okay, your initial velocity is zero. If the initial velocity is zero, then that's it. Okay, so your initial velocity is. And I want you to do for like find D for T equals 1.4. What is D? For that same problem, like initial velocity is zero and the ball is dropped. Okay. You know what dropped mean? Uh, that means initial velocity is zero. Okay. Then find D. I'm going to give you two minutes. The unit is meter. So then the, your distance is 9.8. Okay, yeah, so it's, it's a simple application of the equation. Again, um, uh, then your D uh, will be is equal to half times 80 squared, right? Um, then half times A is 10, you need to use 10. Um, T squared, which is 1.4 squared. Yes, for if it is a freely falling object, use nine, use ten. Okay. Yes, yes. The negative uh, thingy. We are going to come to that point when we when you will use it because now we are assuming falling objects are for. Yeah, they just if we use in some instances like the opposite of ten, then it's going to be negative ten. Okay. All right. Yes. That's that's fine. Uh, if, you, if you guys already um, get used to use nine point eight, that's that's perfectly fine. Too, okay, so uh, we're halfway uh, through the class. So um, the usual five minutes break. Okay, five. You know, I I said five. You know, it's 